Rio Daylight come and you wanna go home Day City 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 Daylight come and you wanna go home Daylight come and you wanna go home Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch Seven foot, eight foot, to ranch you like, like come and me wanna go. Day, me say day, oh. Day like come and me wanna go. Day, me say day, oh. Day like come and me wanna go. Day, me say day, oh.
Welcome to the School's Out edition of We're Here. Got some great players here for you. Thanks for joining us. We also have Big Brother on the monitor over here. Watching from afar. Give it up for Big Brother! Big Woo! Brother! Look at him! Look at him! Look! Are you feeling slightly pixelated, Bobby? <laughs> Yeah, we're not hearing you, that's man. That's what we're we call Caribbean all Internet. <laughs> that's te technical difficulties. All right, Jason, shall we? Boys.
We love live TV, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce you to this great band. This <laughs> we have Big Brother on the big screen. Big Brother! Yeah! <laughs> This is Dave Diamond here on the guitar and vocals. This is Jason Crosby on everything and vocals. This is Joe Begale on vocals and keyboards and everything. Of course, everybody knows Jay Lane. I'm Dave Schools, and the name of this next song should be familiar to all of you is Deal. to win Let that 
Take a trip to the couch. Is it over? <laughs> okay, so here we are on the couch where we love it and where all of us end up. And <laughs> tonight, I've got a few questions I want to ask Jay Lane. With your permission, Dr. Schools. Please, the um, form is yours. You know, Jay, when, you know, we all know what a great drummer you are, but when did you realize it, it yourself that you were going to play drums your whole life, man, and love them so much? Hmm. Let's see. Mm. Oh, that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, in other words, you were born with sticks in your hand, is what you said. Yeah, and I, I can't get them out of my hand either. Well, that must have been a painful delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what? Uh, you know, what excuse do you have for all drummers being the crazy guy in the band? Always out. Yeah, you think it's, there's I know. a reason for that? Nah, man. It's 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 actually the other way around. But you all just don't <laughs> see it. Yes, I've heard that before yeah. too. So <laughs> I've heard that. I'm sure you have. <laughs> I mean, I've, most of the biggest complaint is usually that the drummer uh, doesn't have an amp to fool around with, and it really makes him angry. I know that. But you got tuning to do and cymbals to hit. And where are you tonight, man? You seem like you're on the the pot field to the moon right now, man. Yeah, no, I'm just reflecting on what you're saying. You know, you talk, start talking about drums, and I'm just thinking about drums, thinking about those okay. drums. All right, about, okay. like, oil drum drums, sets, you know? what else? So anyway, Jason, it's your turn now. When did music hit you as your life profession? Uh, well, I started playing violin when I was two years old. And really? Yeah. Wow. So like two years before my first memory. Is a did you have a little, a little tiny 16, violin? 16th yeah. size violin, yeah. Wow. And then piano when I was four, and then other instruments after that. But Wow. So I guess There was no other choice been, for you. No, I had no choice. <laughs> and when you first made money playing, did you feel like, wow, did it just completely blow your mind? That yeah, you could make I was living playing music. Yeah, I was way psyched because I, was, I think my first paying gig was at a, as a, at a country club and I was like caddying and it was like a sh shitty job. Oh, and then, perfect. And then I was making 100 <laughs> bucks an hour, it's like 12 year old. <laughs> and uh, I know Jay really enjoyed playing in bands because he got to smoke See weed also. That was the, the <laughs> most, most of the reason for me joining the band, is if they had weed. That's right. Because if not, I, I would be going to the band where they had weed. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and people go to a lot of lengths to get the right drugs for their musicians. The right so kind of weed. There. The right kind of weed. It can't just be anything. So, Dave, now a lot of questions have come in for you, Mr. Schools, also. Ooh. Now, I got to ask you, did you... Did your pants fall off one night at a widespread panic show? Well, because we're getting asked a lot about that. <laughs> and this one guy, Fly Gaff, he wants to know, are you ever going to do it again? <laughs> well, it was a wardrobe malfunction. I think that's, uh, that's. Oh, really? Uh, I had a costume on and. Uh, oh, OK. It this was, believe it or not, a, like several sizes too large for me. <laughs> it was sort of, a, sort of a big white pimp costume. and. Uh, <laughs> All through the night, the pants were fine, and then when we got to the rockin' song that ended the second set, oh. right when it really just hit, they, they just, it was, there was no warning, they just went, Pff. my pants are down around my ankles. I'm in front of 10,000 people in New Orleans, and then I thought to myself, wait a minute, this is New Orleans, shouldn't someone be throwing some beads exactly. at me or something? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't think it's gonna happen again unless some zombies get me. Uh, a question comes in also asking you, what's the weirdest thing that Mickey Hart did when you were on tour with him? <laughs> and you can, we all know that Mickey does weird things on tour, so. Well, you know, Mickey is a, he, he's a hell of a musician and he works really hard yes, at right. getting things just exactly right, um, even when we're not on stage. It's really hard to get him out for like a band and crew dinner on a night off. He's, he's busily foraging in the forest of sound looking for new things and uh, 
But it was my birthday, so we managed to talk him into coming out for dinner. And uh, he ordered some uh, lamb ribs, lamb shanks or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, they looked really good, you know. But the uh, first thing I know is he's cut the meat part off and he's given it to chewer. me. The bone And he's chewer. gnawing on the bones. And he's like, ah, yeah, the sweet of the meat, the, <laughs> the close to the, the bone. Close to the bone. He's uh, always been loving that. That is the truth uh, characteristic. Well, it works out great for me, you know, because I, I, I get the good part. And you he gnaws the, the bones into the bone. bleached out white things. But, you know, I really, I love being on tour with him. And uh, Joe can, can sound in on this, too. He, he's in the band. He's one of the vocalists in Mickey's band. And uh, we have a great time. It's and a new adventure. he's got the best weed, too, Mickey. I mean, you got good weed, too, but... <laughs> Uh, when I first met Mickey, I was, we used to call it Mickey weed. Well, was, we could, can't smoke that on gig You were day. laboring under delusion. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you didn't tell the story. I mean, was it last summer? I woke up on the road. We were, I was on the road with another band, and there was Mickey's name as the most wanted man in America. <laughs> and then when I found out the whole story, I, I understood knowing bus companies like I did. But he had uh, a little incident uh, he on did. the road, he, didn't he? We all had a little incident. That uh, was, was a bus from hell, and I believe we... We kind of did some bus from hell stories last week, but uh, oh, you know that yeah, was. Yeah, I thought it, someone sent me that link, and I was like, "Wow, Mickey Hart is on TMZ." <laughs> you know, when is Perez Hilton going to start showing up? What's going to happen next? <laughs> I thought now, taking all these years, and they finally realize he's public enemy number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, he will never commit a rhythmic violation ever. No, <laughs> ever. No, uh, he can't. He's not capable. Of that. <laughs> Does that mean he wants the boss wants to talk? Hey, How's it going there, big brother? How's the Amazon? Well, yeah, I tell you what. I tell you what. Did, did Mickey? I got to ask a question. Did those bones ever show up on stage? Did he actually? Use oh yeah. Them? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They were they were turned into sort of an ineffective chime device. Uh, you know, out back of his house, he's got that pile of bones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's. A, I, I remember one time that Jay had a a, a set a setup of of little. I think they call them boobams or something like that. They're boop, 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 you know, and kind of. Oh boop, boop, yeah, boop, boop, electric ones. PVC pipe. And I was power. I was gonna I was gonna have them I was gonna have them um, inset in a bunch of skulls and have a ring. <laughs> A ring of skulls to sort of drop on like this. That's somebody shooting from a jay. With those things, and you know, they have smoke coming out their ears, and uh, he could play them like that. You know, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> no, I know exactly what he means because uh, at Woodstock, um, when Carabella was playing with Santana, he, uh, his hair was was a big afro, and he was sweating. And the lights were hitting him. And one of the roadies for Santana, John Villanueva, he threw a bucket of water on his head, thinking he caught on fire. <laughs> while he was so sometimes uh, musicians can combust on stage. It does happen. You know what? I, I just remember, you know, you were asking me about, like, uh, like when I started playing drums and all right, that. Right, right. Just rem reminded me of, like, like, I love playing the drums so much that I've shown up at gigs without sticks and like use tree branches. Right man. on, right on. You know? And like one time, like I was playing this gig and there wasn't anywhere around where I could get drumsticks and I went to a Toys R Us and got and toy Well, they had to toy drum sets, you know, and I yeah. stole a pair of the little plastic sticks. <laughs> oh. I stole, man. Well, at least you did it for music, man. Yeah. And you know, the thing is that they must have been kind of small. Though. Yeah, yeah. But it's happened more than once, you know. <laughs> like, you know, you remember everything except that one little thing, you know. The, which <laughs> the is sticks. it, the stealing part? Or right. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, Dave, there's another question for you about, do you ever have a spring break that really stands out in your mind? And that is from a guy named Taco <laughs> Bell Bender. <laughs> Taco Bell. Taco Bender Bell. Taco. Oh, is he here? Is he here? He's oh, actually that's in the him? studio audience. All right. Anyway, he wanted to know your spring break story, if you ever had one. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a, it was never spring break in, like, you know, some city yeah. in Florida or Texas. It was, uh, well, I got to say, I was in college in 83, 84, 85. Spring break, uh, it meant Grateful Dead tour. 
There you go. <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. those were the good times. Well, then another question is, did you ever attend a Grateful Dead, mind-blowing Grateful Dead show with Mikey, JB, or any other bandmate? Uh, actually, yeah, we, Widespread Panic, played some Dead songs. There was common ground while we were writing our own music um, in the beginning, and the Dead came through Atlanta and played two nights at the Fox Theater in 1985, which uh -huh. is that was a great that's where show. Gone with the Wind premiered, and if you've never been there, I'd suggest that you try to go if you're ever in Atlanta. It's gorgeous, and it sounds yeah. amazing, and it was really cool to, to be there with those guys and, and see the Dead uh, in, in that place. It, I think that there was a, an old banner that was unearthed, a stage banner uh, from the 70s, mm -hmm. like the Blues for Allah banner, yeah, and we, they we rolled it out. We played there a number of times at the uh, Fox in Atlanta, and uh, it was always that way, you know, steeped in the history that it had because the, um, the premiere of Gone with the Wind. And, right. And, but it still was one of the classic theaters of America. It sounded great, it looked great. And they were selling bricks. They were, at the time, they were selling these right. bricks from the, that they were taking out of the walls and replacing with other ones. And we bought a couple just to throw it the windows so that they left worth it. <laughs> That's right. But um, Jason, what's your favorite place to play in the whole wide world? Mm. <laughs> right, right here at TRI. TRI. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Good answer. Good I answer. <laughs> That's a pretty good lead into the music, isn't it? Or it yeah, going? I guess it is. Uh, you know, last week we had a really great show. Um, we had a new friend, Leslie Mendelssohn, join us, mm -hmm. and uh, yep. she blew people's minds, and basically the people have demanded an encore. So in the spirit of giving the people what they want, here's a, a video of Friend of the Devil performed by our friend Leslie Mendelssohn. <laughs> Come 
Someone says she's got my child, but it don't look like me. Sit down, run, but I take my time. Friend of the devil is a friend of mine. If I get home before daylight, I just might get some sleep. you want to do with no one to enter to you're free to call up inside or jump into the world outside and harboring such resentment those who feel such contentment a simple life in the country so you can shape your history Don't know when it changed Become so strange Looking for a means to an end Then you wait to find you have no friend And daydreams of days gone by Staring up into that eastern sky Where you find me Well, the rushes in like the ocean's tide you find me Under that eastern sky is where The silver spoon has begun to rust Or that family portrait turns to dust And when is enough or ever enough You plan, you plan for when life gets rough You give it up to the universe To dig you out from all the hurt I don't know when to change, you become so estranged. Well, you're looking for our meals to an end. Then you wake to find you have no friend. Daydreams of days gone by. You staring up into that eastern sky.
Dave Diamond with Eastern Skies. Some of you folks may recognize Dave. You played with the Zen Tricksters for a while, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Quite a couple of tours of duty with the Zen Tricksters. Yeah. And uh, now you're playing with? Uh, Assembly of Dust, along with my buddy Jason over there. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? Speaking <laughs> of Jason, Jason's got a project and... Uh, you know, we love innovation here at uh, TRI. So, uh, whether it's in the field of audio reproduction or, you know, just a whole different idea. And I don't know if you know about uh, Beck Hansen, you know, Loser Baby. His latest album is in a completely unusual format. It's actually uh, it's a bunch of sheet music. It's 20 songs. Uh, it's this beautiful package. Sheet music here. You can see this. And... Uh, Jason has chosen to do a song. In fact, you're doing a whole album. You want to yeah, yeah, tell we, us about it? Yeah, we recorded uh, a lot of it in New York in the, in the first week of January. And then uh, since I've moved out here to California, I've been adding more Cali folk on it. And uh, it should be, should be done in about a month or so. That's great. I got to play on it. I'm pretty psyched. <laughs> yeah, me too. What's this and, song called? Uh, this, this one is called I'm Down. Okay. I'm down and this town is a nuisance It'll put your backbone all in a ruin With the area code of a truant I'm fluent in the hazards of love Feed a war into a billy goat Fix the spelling on a suicide note a get well card from a holy ghost To a beggar who smells like a rose I'm down, I'm down and I feel like a loner There's a skyscraper city below her I wanna feed my heart to a cobra Cause nothing ever happens to me Like a blessing disguised as a curse Like a sermon that's run out of words Like a cage that can't keep any birds I can't keep my arms around you in a tag top who's telling me how to be free like a prayer in a personal ad like a knife in a broken back learn to love what you can't get rid of before it gets rid of you Now it's back to the couch for Psychotherapy featuring Steve Parrish. No, no, you were right. That was Andy, right? Yeah, that you were right. Oh, 
Good. Hello, fellow mental defectives. We're here to help you with all your problems. Uh, we're here, we, there's nothing that we won't go into your mind or your body. And that's about what we're about, actually. And so, Mr. Schools, or as I call him, Dr. Schools, he is going to attempt to penetrate my mind. Should I let him? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, uh, Steve, you know, you, we've been seeing each other for quite some time now. And well, uh, wait a minute. Now. I'm not really sure if we're seeing making any progress other. here. Well, no, because uh, I'm either building up walls or I'm tearing down curtains. Which should it be? Well, you know, it, I think we have... You, I know you miss Bobby. You know, he's away on vacation and... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Hey, anybody who guesses where Bob is gets a free trip one way to the North Pole. <laughs> Maybe you can hitch a ride on a sleigh come Christmas time. I, I, but I feel like we should re resort to some uh, archaic... We uh -oh. lost Big Brother again. Uh -oh. He'll be phoning back in just a second. <laughs> in fact, there he is now. <laughs> Let him back on. And so, yeah, so uh, I know that you've already figured out a way into my mind, and uh, why don't you keep going? Well, and then I'll tell you whether you're on the right track. Here. I'll tell you what, why don't we do some simple word association? Okay, let's start there. You know, so I'll just say a word, and you'll tell me the first thing that comes into your head, okay? Okay, Doc. Uh, groupie. <laughs> Vagina. <laughs> Mommy issues, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, concert. Vagina, I mean, uh, um, concert. Um, music played in a certain a way by certain people at the same amount of time that it takes them to complete the mathematical quotation of the song. I think I need some therapy now. <laughs> uh, road case. Uh, lift up. Be less than 300 pounds, please. Truck. Be less than 300. I mean, uh, <laughs> truck. Does it have a steering wheel? Does it have a door? Yes. Can we take it? Can we use it? Will somebody be mad at us for using it? Uh, it was a big moment in our lives when we got trucks, you know, and we used to call it uh, life, looking at life, working for the Grateful Dead from the back of a truck, because that was a great way to see everything, you know. And it's your favorite time when you're loading the truck and when you're unloading it, because if you don't do that correctly, nothing works right, nothing. And so the great and illustrious Ramrod was the guy who taught us all how to load trucks, and in the Grateful Dead world, None could be better than him. And we would blow people's mind, go to airports, and they'd see our gear come off the airplanes in the old days when we used to get on there and put them on. And then they'd say, they'd laugh when they'd see the size of our truck, but we could always get it in there. We never lost anything. And we managed to fit it in there because that is a true genius of loading trucks. Was that a one word answer? Ramrod. I forgot. Ramrod? Ramrod, one word. Yeah, one word, that's right. Chuck Ramrod. That's right. Well, uh, you wrote a book. How long ago did you write this book? I was forced to write that at gunpoint. And uh, there were 63 books when I wrote that in 1998. <laughs> and I looked at the 63 books on the Grateful Dead, and not one of them had one bit of really from the inside of us explaining some of the fun and crazy times we had. And so I just tried to make a, a quick little story about that. And my life had been the dream of so many people at that time to run off with a rock and roll band in 1969, and it turned out to be successful. The chances of that are nil. Uh, as all musicians know, as most of them have taken a vow of poverty anyway. And we had uh, such a great thing with the Grateful Dead that we created ourselves as a crew. And this is a picture of us in 1972 in Europe, one of our greatest trips, where we stood the world on its end. But most of these guys are hard livers. Where most of them are dead, except me and Sparky and Kid, he's still alive, and Sam Cutler in here. Um, but it was a hard life, you know? It was really not for the weak 
minded. And so I tried to put some of that in there too, how we <laughs> were constantly helping each other uh, psychologically. And I don't know if you've ever had this phenomenon, but with us in the Grateful Dead, it would be mystical stuff would happen on the road all the time. Oh yeah. And there would be some times when we'd all, you know, be up for a few days and come to the show and I'm not kidding you, everybody had the same dream. Everybody had the same dream. What does that mean? That's, that's mystical. And, uh, you know, having Jerry as a, a person that we could counsel with and work with was a really great gift to all of us, and we knew it, you know. And it was so much fun. He really loved working people, and he loved everyone that worked on the shows, everyone that came to the shows. And that whole vibe just shined out from him to all of us, you know. And so due to the great uh, having a band like that, we were able to create a crew. And this is basically, uh, you know, this picture right here, if, uh, hand me the book for a sec. This picture uh, on here was Annie Leibowitz had taken this when she came out with Jerry and I on a trip. And her and Jerry were doing a little bit of a thing there. They got to be really close. And uh, she came out and took these pictures. When I asked her for a picture, I don't know what I'm passing to Jerry here. I, I'm not sure. Some sort of a cigarette. But this is back room. It's so long ago before practice amps, he actually, we would take his twin reverb up there to the dressing room. And so I wanted to write something because I got to hear so much great music and to work such great musicians that uh, I think it was a shared experience that everybody who came to shows was interested in. Well, this is the thing about bands that live on the road, uh, the crew is family. The band is family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when it integrates into a big family, it's, it's, it's wonderful um, because there's comedy and there's hijinks, there's life, there's death. Uh, yep. There's a great concerts, there's the not so great concerts, there's audiences out of control, there's where is the audience tonight? Well, we'll play for the crew, you know, and that's, uh, it's what makes it really worth doing. Well, when you can look around and know that these guys got your back, and if something goes wrong, which it very seldom does, uh, it's going to get taken care of. And it's just, a, it's like a safety net. It's a wonderful feeling. Well, you know, uh, that reminds me of a story that's in the book here, but uh, we were going, we were doing uh, one-nighters in those days with a big PA that we had. It wasn't a wall of sound yet, but it was giant. And we were, we played Wichita, right? And we were going to... Uh, Houston, Hoffine's Pavilion, to play with the Allman Brothers the next day. And uh, that night, when we left Wichita in the early morning, it was storming, like just storming. And it's a pretty straight run if you look on a map from Wichita to Houston. But there's one turn. There's one turn on that highway. And all night, when I was supposed to be sleeping, and Sparky was driving, I couldn't sleep, right? And... <coughs> When I got behind the wheel in the morning, it was still pouring rain, Texas highway slick as heck could be. And to make a long story short, I rolled this truck with all our gear in it, right? Oh, and man. it ended up in the Texas mud, which was just all over it. And um, it was, Sparky and I, there was a moment of silence. We kicked our way through the windshield and crawled out. The other guys were right behind us in a rental car and they were crying. I never saw my brothers crying like that. Jackson and Ramrod and Hurd and all of them. And so we just got together immediately and said, okay, you get the, in the rental car, go get another truck. They came back, we loaded everything in. We didn't get there till five o'clock and we figured, well, the Allman brothers were gonna be uh, taking care of the time limit and you know, uh, do something, to, uh, there would be something. But no, because that day on the way to the airport, uh, Barry Oakley, their bass player died. <sighs> In a motorcycle. Motorcycle. Accident. Same so corner that Dwayne died. So it was a strange day. But when we set the PA up in front of the people and everything was caked with mud, we were caked with mud, the Grateful Dead played and I felt a thing that they were playing for us. They were playing for the crew, for the guys that worked for them. And they played their hearts out, man, for us, you know, and you could feel it. And uh, I'll never forget that night when I finally got to the Holiday Inn. Phil was wandering the hallway and he walked into my room and he looked down, I sat on a bed and he looked down at my boots, they were just caked with mud. And he got down and pulled them off my feet. And 
you know, that kind of stuff we would do for each other. It was like, you risked your life for me. And from that moment on, we actually got um, semis and truck drivers. Right. So we didn't have to drive all night. Yeah, it's a shame. It always takes something like that to, to get them to finally come through with the gear you need to really to yeah. really do it. You, you know, live and it's learn. a shame. But you live and that's learn. what life on the road is. It's, it's uh, life. I drove the truck one time. Only once? One good time. It was a good time, too. <laughs> <laughs> We never let Kreutzmann or Mickey drive, but sometimes they had a ride in the back of the truck, though. Now, see, Panic's drummer drove a lot because the rule in widespread panic was if you were driving, you got to pick the music. Oh, yeah. yeah that was it. Oh, yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. if you wanted to listen to the music you loved, you drove. But this all, you know, this is detailed in your book, and, and uh, you know, it seems like this might make a great movie. What do you think, Steve? Well, you know, over the years, uh, all the years that we played, in colleges, a lot of those people went on to become Hollywood executives and stuff, and they've talked about that. <laughs> and it's the uh, thing of, you know, coming up with the right way to do it. And we're working on that idea. Yeah. We are working on that. That's really good. Well, you know, uh, we uh, thought that it might be interesting to take a gander at some of the people, <laughs> uh, some of the actors who are, are being uh, you know, considered for playing the part of Steve Parrish uh -oh. in, in the uh -oh. movie made on the Steve Parrish book, which is uh, <laughs> it's called uh, Home Before Daylight, My Life on the Road with the Grateful Dead. And that was uh, because our goal was to get home before daylight, daylight, back to our cave. So you get some sleep. You're in the cave. On the couch. Right, exactly. And that line comes from Friend of the <clears throat> Devil, too. That's right. So we've actually had some people give us some ideas. We have some some well, I'm uh, interested in bookies this. in Las Vegas are, are putting odds on oh, who's going to actually play the part of Steve Parrish uh, in the movie. And so here's a picture of Steve and the crew. Here's Steve right here on the end, just to give you an idea of what a, a <laughs> tight-knit family it really is. Uh, now here's, uh, we figure that a lot of the movie will take place in the glory days. <laughs> yeah. You know, Steve Parrish's glory days. So here's, uh, here's a picture of what Steve looks like in his glory days. Line up. Yeah. yeah. So, that was the mark know, on the wall back there. Look like you've been driving all night, you know, but some fun <laughs> is being had. Uh, so these bookies, they've put uh, even odds on some actors. And, and this is, it's pretty even that uh, <laughs> Sam Elliott would do a great job of <laughs> playing Steve Parrish. You know, Roadhouse, <laughs> Big Lebowski. You know, just uh, sure. probably wouldn't even have I'm to act at all. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, you know. And it, gets, it starts getting a little odd. Two to one, Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, <laughs> two to one odds, Weird Al. Uh, uh, you know, and then things start getting a little crazy. Uh, you know, maybe the dead were playing in Vegas when these odds were made, but uh, <laughs> some people figured Dustin Hoffman would be really great to play Steve Parrish. Yeah, if he could stand on a box or something. Well, there's a, there's a caveat with this Dustin Hoffman appearance. He's got to be... Captain Hook from Peter Pan. <laughs> um, it, it really starts getting crazy. You I really mean, thought about this, didn't you? Yeah, well, not me. It's these guys in Vegas. You know, they put odds on what songs you guys would play. Uh, this yes, one's really far yes. out. This is uh, Owen, the dwarf from the Hobbit movie. <laughs> it's uh, great beard work there. I like there. him. I like him a lot. You think you could grow your beard back? Yes, I think I can. Actually. Do you think you find someone? How do I look with a beard? Oh yeah, there you go. That's that is the beard. Mustache. And uh, well, we had this late entry. This is another even odds favorite, and I put my money on this one <laughs> uh, to play Steve Parrish in the biopic King Kong. Oh yeah. Groupie in hand favorite. here, taking New York City by storm. <clears throat> that is it for for me. I think this works well. <laughs> it's, I was King thinking Kong. Tommy Chong, man. Oh, yeah, man, you can do it. see? You can do it. But he, he's out of jail now, isn't he? Uh, we can arrange to have him drop back in for that, yeah. Well, we'll get him paroled if he is, but that's no, he's right. out. He's he is now out. He's free. He's free. But, um, yeah, that's the whole part of the fun of it, you know. Uh, trying to make something like that to be put on a screen, that's a real task because there's so many years involved and so many different characters and people that we met and we love so much. I don't know. It's a daunting task in a lot of ways. It's, uh, it hasn't been done yet. And I don't think, I don't know if, I, I mean, they did a great job with Ray. 
You know, the Ray Wait Charles. Wait a minute. Wait a that was second. good. You could play what? Steve. Could I? I? I'm thinking it. Yeah. You guys think? Can I play Steve Parrish in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does Big Brother think? Can I play the part of Steve Parrish? You still with us? Man, this Amazonian First internet. Off, you guys on the couch. You guys on the couch are going to sit up straight for the slow. Oh, okay. <laughs> no slouching. <laughs> all right, all right. What else? Bad look. Uh, part of Steve Parrish. Did he say something Sell about Hershey Park? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I lost him there. Salminio. 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 Yeah, oh. too bad he's gone to his glory in heaven, though. That's right. We're going to have a crystal ball uh, casting yeah. session. <laughs> well, you know, we... Uh, well, then Brad Pitt, come on. <laughs> Brad Pitt, yeah, there you go. Of course, of course. <laughs> That's perfect. But, yes, uh, and the whole thing is that I, all, we also want people to write in and give us permission to release the dog from his ball and chain. Snapper, she's paid her price. Let's let her go. Oh, so you give her to Jay. Yeah, well, <laughs> really he's, good. She's, he's, she is Jay's dog. We never told you that. He was loaning her to us. <laughs> but, so we'd, we'd like to remind you that we, uh, we sent Bobby off to the Amazon. He's surfing down the Amazon River. And uh, we hope that you don't run into those little fish that you know, uh, swim upstream, if you know what I mean. He knows better than to be right, in right. There. Well, I tell you what, they've got those pink porpoises. You guys sitting up straight now? I, I, I'm, I'm watching from yeah. uh, Yes, sir. You guys. Uh, we got our ears on, on this and everything. For man. another 20 minutes. He's we not kidding back. either, man. He's a, he's a, he very much means that. <laughs> I'm trying to break a camera lens right now, man. It's fun up here, you know. <clears throat> the mosquitoes are kind of thick. I like it. Like, uh, makes me feel alive. Where are you digging? Are you redigging the Panama Canal again? Well, actually, <clears throat> I'm on one of these little islands in the in the Caribbean. Um, big pirate hangout, apparently. Oh. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go digging one of these. One of these, uh, one of these fun. To see if I can get myself fabulously wealthy. Glad we can only hear every other word of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, it's not working. No. But we love having you here. Well, thanks. <laughs> I mean, it is your show, you know. Right. <laughs> well, you guys carry on. You know, I can conk about every self. So, uh, You've had enough conk. So that's a good lifetime. advice for us to sit up yeah. straight. He's right about that. Well, we sent Bob on, uh, you know, a lot of rock stars fly first class. They might even have their own private jet. But uh, we thought we'd put him in the TRI truck and send him down. You saw a little bit of that at the beginning of the show tonight. But we actually recorded a song in the truck. And uh, we'd like for you to see that. So wish Bob a bon voyage. And here's me and Bobby live from the truck. If I had a gun for every ace I have drawn, I could arm a town, sons of Abilene. Don't you push me, baby, cause I'm on the low. You know I'm only in it for the gold All that I am asking for Ten gold dollars I could pay you back one good hand You could look all around about the wide world over You will never find another 
honest man Last bad deal in the country Last bad deal in the town Put your gold money where your love is, baby Before you let my deal go down Go down Don't you push me, baby Cause I'm on low Well, I know Little something You won't ever know Don't you touch hard liquor Just a cup of cold coffee Gonna get up in the morning and go Everybody's bragging Drinking their wine I can tell Queen of Diamonds by the way she shine Come to daddy On inside straight Well I've got no chance of losing This time Well I've got no chance of losing this time Well I've got no Chance of losing This time Come to daddy on an 
Inside straight Well I've got no Chance of losing This time Well I've got no Chance of losing This time Well I've got no Chance of losing This time fall apart Still you fill me with strength See the future, not the past. Can't tell what. 
time will tell Right now I can think of no one deal We've seen there is no one less With you I'll see the future, not the past Can't tell what time will tell Oh, right now I can think of no one else We've seen love is the one less With you I'll see the future, not the past
Pacquiao, Joe Bigail, Dave Diamond, Jay Lane, Jason Crosby. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all next week.